The next few lessons are going to be about using calculus to determine characteristics of a graph of higher order functions or of complicated uh, trig functions or composite functions or high power functions like we talked about. Um, all the old things you learn in algebra about characteristics of a graph still hold true. All right? You know, if it's a linear function, slope and y-intercept are still used. X-intercepts and y-intercepts are still helpful to find points on the graph. Um, end behavior, talking about asymptotes or vertical asymptotes or families of functions, if you know what the particular family looks like, all that stuff's important. But a lot of times as you combine graphs or get more complicated functions, you need more than just algebra skills or trigonometry skills to determine what the graph looks like without a calculator. So for the first few sections, the next few sections, we're going to figure out what the derivative, what the first derivative and what the second derivative can tell us about the picture of the function, about what the graph of the function looks like. Then in about five or six lessons from now, we're going to put everything we ever learned about graphing together in order to sketch functions without using a calculator or a computer. Just by determining using the derivative, using the second derivative, and using the old stuff you've learned to get some ideas about what these functions will look like. The first thing we're going to talk about is extreme values or extrema on a closed interval. Now there's a lot of vocabulary and terminology in this lesson, so we're going to start off with some of that. First, the word extrema. Some people pronounce it extrema. Long e, short e. I don't really care as long as you know what it means. Okay? Extreme values are your highest or your lowest values of the function at that point. The y values. The maximum value will be the highest point. The minimum value will be the lowest point. There can be more than one max or more than one min. If two points are equally as high or equally as low, then there's two max or two min. I want to go over some interval notation. You have a closed interval, an open interval, and a half-closed interval. Intervals refer to the x-axis. If I say the interval from A to B, I mean from A on the x-axis to B on the x-axis. What's the graph look like between those two? If you had the graph, you could take it. If it was a physical piece of paper, you could cut it straight down there, and all you're looking at is between those two values. A closed interval, using the bracket notation, means that you are including both endpoints on the interval. So the value of the function at A is considered on the interval, and the value of the function at B is also considered on the interval. An open interval is indicated using parentheses. An open interval means you include all the values between A and B, but the value of the function at the endpoints is not included. So it would kind of be like open circles on the end. So every value approaching that open circle counts but you never actually get to that circle if it's an open interval. This is the same notation you use to identify a point on the coordinate plane. So before you see this, the problem or the book or the question or whatever will say, uh, you know, on the interval and then in this notation, you know, three to seven or something like that. So you're not confused and think it's a point. And then you can also have half closed or half open intervals. The bracket here and the parenthesis here means that the left end point, A, counts, is included, but the right end point is not. Or vice versa, you can have the left end point not count, and the right, the right end point count or be included. So extreme values or extrema are those highest or lowest points on the graph. They are sometimes or oftentimes called the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum. Meaning, on your interval, the absolute, the overall, the highest point on the graph, that's your absolute maximum. And then for your absolute minimum, it's the lowest point on that interval. It could occur at the end points or it could occur somewhere in between. A synonym for absolute max or min is a global max or min. Global maximum or global minimum. They mean the exact same thing, but it depends on the textbook, the author, the teacher, or the test that you're taking or looking at which one they're going to say. So it's important to use or to be familiar with both of those terms. Absolute means that overall, global means everywhere.
So here we're going to look at some extrema where there's holes in the graph and see what happens. You see this graph, a pretty wide view of a parabola. You have three points here. Your absolute max is going to be your highest point. So as this curves, you see the highest point on this interval from it looks like negative 3 to positive 1. So on the interval, your absolute max is this value right here. Negative 3 and it looks like maybe 8 or so. Your absolute min is going to be your lowest point, which is where the parabola, the vertex of the parabola, 0 looks like negative 2. So you have an absolute max, your highest point, nothing higher. An absolute min, a lowest point, nothing lower. So that's a graph of the max and the min. Here's a graph that only has a maximum. Same graph, I'm just using open holes in certain spots now. So the max is still the same, closed circle, no points higher. But now you have a hole in the graph, this point's not included. So you can continue to get closer and closer and closer to that point, and the numbers will continue to get lower. Since so they never actually reach that point, if this was at negative 2, you get to negative 1.9, negative 1.99, negative 1.999. If you added a ton of 9s, a thousand 9s, you could still add another one and keep getting closer. So this has only an absolute max and no absolute min. And then here's a function that has that min down there, but it has no maximum point because the same idea. You're approaching that circle, that open hole, but you never actually get to it, so you can keep getting theoretically higher and higher numbers closer and closer to the value of the function at that hole. One theorem, another existence theorem, uh, the intermediate value theorem was our first existence theorem, where if you had a point here and a point here and the function was continuous, then every value between those two values exists. Well, here's another existence theorem. It's called the extreme value theorem. If a function is continuous on a closed interval, meaning you include the endpoint, so it's continuous the whole way through, then there must exist a maximum and there must exist a minimum on that interval. So a function like this is continuous from A to B, negative 3 to 1. There has to be a max. There has to be a min. There's no way you can draw a function that's continuous between its endpoints that doesn't have a highest point and a lowest point. And as I said before, it can have more than one of both or either, but it has to have at least one if it's continuous. Now you have absolute or global extrema. Now we're going to talk about relative or local extrema. Again, two words meaning the same exact thing. Just like I said, depending on the textbook, author, test writer, teacher, professor, whatever, they may use different terms. So a relative extrema, or a relative max, or a relative min, is a point that is a maximum or a minimum relative to the points close around it. All right? So not overall, necessarily, although it could be. But if you just took a small little window just before and just after that point, it would be a max or it would be a min. Up here, I'll give you the example at B. Although overall on this curve here, you got points higher than B over here to the right. If I just looked at a little area around B and said, okay, I'm just going to look right before and right after B, you see that it is the top, it is the highest point in that area, in that location, in a local little Space, a local little area before and after, B is your highest point. So B would be defined as a relative maximum. Same thing down here with C. If I look just before and just after, C is the lowest point. Now in this case of this diagram, C is actually the absolute minimum also. So relative extrema can also be absolute extrema. can also happen at the top of a sharp term, like a, an absolute value function, or if you have the radicals that have the sharp terms, that can happen also. What you want to notice is where the relative extrema occur. 
the top of a hump, the bottom of a hump, or the top or bottom if that was reflected of a sharp turn. So we got to think about what does this mean in terms of the derivative? Well, the derivative at B would be a horizontal tangent line, would be zero. Same at C. Sharp turns, the derivatives are undefined. All relative extrema occur at either the top of a hump or the bottom of a hump, where you have a horizontal tangent line, or at a sharp turn, where you have an undefined derivative. More vocabulary. Critical numbers. A critical number is an x value, a value of the independent variable, where the derivative is either zero or undefined. So it's just, if, if you found the derivative and evaluated it at that x value, it would come out to be either zero or it would be undefined. That's a critical number, a number that makes the derivative zero or a number that makes the derivative undefined. That being said, relative extrema must occur at a critical number. That's the only place relative extrema can occur. They have to occur at a horizontal tangent or an undefined tangent. But every critical number doesn't necessarily have to be a relative extrema. Just because you derived it, set it equal to zero and found that value, doesn't mean, oh, that's a relative max or a relative min. It means it's a possibility. And I'll show you an example here. An x cubed graph. If you derived it, found it where the derivative equals zero, you would find right here where it curves, flattens out, and it comes back up. So you'd have a horizontal tangent line right here, but this is not a relative extrema because it's going up, flattens out, and goes back up. It would have to either go up and come back down, or it would have to be coming down and go back up. So here's a horizontal tangent. Here's a derivative equal to zero. That's not an extrema. So that'd be a critical number somewhere around one, two, a little way after two, like x is 2.1 or something like that. You would have a critical number, but it would not be a relative max or min. Big thing to remember, relative extrema must occur where the derivative is zero, where you have a horizontal tangent, or where you have an undefined tangent where the derivative is undefined. <clears throat> so here's pretty much your guidelines. To find overall absolute or global extrema, absolute max, absolute min. They can occur either at the end point. You can start up, and this is on a closed interval, mind you, on a closed interval, not on the whole, on the whole uh, x-axis from negative infinity to infinity. On a closed interval, you want to look to see where the extreme are, where the absolute extreme are. They can occur at the endpoints, or they can occur at a critical number or a relative extreme. They're either, they have to occur either at a critical number or at an endpoint. The highest point is either somewhere where you got a hump or the bottom, or it started higher or it started lower. So if you look back here, your absolute max was at D, the highest point, at an end point. Okay, this is the end of the interval. Your absolute min was at C, was at a relative extrema, at a critical number. Okay, so it could occur either at a critical number or at an end point. So, in order to find extrema on a closed interval, the first thing you gotta do is find all the critical numbers. They'll give you the interval, so you have to find all the critical numbers of the function. Again, where the derivative equals zero or the derivative is undefined. Then you have to evaluate the function at the critical numbers, at every critical number in the interval, because you're only looking for A and B. If the critical numbers outside of there, don't even worry about it. You evaluate the function. Remember, we're looking for the highest point, so we're looking for the y value. Once you find a critical number, you plug it back into the original function to see what its height is, whether it's uh, going up or going down. All right, you're looking for the y value, so you evaluate the function at the critical number. Derive, find the critical numbers, plug those values back into the function to see what value they give you. 
Then you also have to check the endpoints. So you evaluate the function at each of its endpoints. Again, the function itself. Plug the, the left endpoint into the function, plug the right endpoint into the function to find your values. Then you'll have a list of all your possibilities. Absolute extrema has to happen either at a critical number or at an endpoint. So you have your critical numbers, one, two, three, four, whatever, your two endpoints, check them all, one of them's going to be your max, one of them's going to be your min. You could have more than one max or more than one min, but at least one has to be a max, one has to be a min. All these functions we're talking about here, we're assuming are continuous on that closed interval. Finally, we're going to give you, or I'll give you an example, pretty simple example, basic numbers. Some of the ones you'll do in class will be a little more difficult to derive and do a factor and solve for, but I want you to see a simple example to walk through and understand so you know the concepts, so you know the steps that you work on the more difficult ones in class. So I want you to find the extrema of the function on the interval negative 1 to 2. Closed interval because you got brackets. So if x is negative 1 to x is 2, find the extreme values. The highest or value, the lowest value. And this, if it says extrema, that means absolute or global. It will tell you if it wants to find the relative extrema. So your function is 3x to the 4th minus 4x cubed. So the first thing you got to do, find your critical numbers, where the derivative of 0 are undefined. So you got to send the, or I'm sorry, so you have to derive the function, where the derivative equals 0, where the derivative is undefined. 12x to the third minus 12x squared. f prime of x equals 12x to the third minus 12x squared. When setting derivatives equal to 0, you want to factor as much as you can. So both of these terms have a 12 and an x squared. Factor that out. 12x squared times, I'm left with just an x, minus just a 1. Now you set it equal to 0. 12x squared is going to be 0 when x is 0 x minus 1 is going to give me 0 when x is 1. So my critical numbers for this function are 0 and 1. So now, you know I have two critical numbers. Well, i got to see how big is the function? What's the value of the function at those numbers? So I take f of 0. Remember, value of the function back to the original function. That's why I left this big here. This is what you want to find your values at. 3, 3 times 0 minus 4 times 0 gives you 0. So f of 0 is 0. Plug in 1. 3 times 1 minus 4 times 1. Oh, well, you get negative 1. f of 1 is negative 1. So you found the values of the function at the critical numbers. Now you've got to check the endpoints too, because they could be higher or lower. f of negative 1, because we're going on interval negative 1 to 2. Negative 1 to the 4th is positive 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 4 times negative 1 cubed. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So minus negative 4, 3 plus 4, you get f of negative 1 is 7. Value of the function at the endpoint, this function is 7. Finally, the other one, and the other endpoint, at 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 3 times 16 is 48. Minus 2, 4, 8, 4 times 8 is 32. 48 minus 32 you get 16. And now you look. Here are my values of the function. Well, here's the lowest one. So at 1, if I graph this function on the interval, at x equals 1, the function should be the lowest, because that's the lowest value, that's my minimum. 16 is your biggest number, so at the right end point, because that was where that was, f of 2, it should be the highest. To give you a little picture of the graph here, see at negative 1, you're at 7. At 0, you're at 0. At negative, I'm sorry, at 1, you're at negative 1, which is my lowest point. And at 2, you're at 16, which is my highest point. Minimum, maximum. 1, 2. 